Hey there, welcome back to the Wild Blue Wanderers channel. I'm Scott. And I'm Ashley. And as we mentioned in a previous video, we sold our farm and are planning on going full time in our motorhome uh, in sometime this summer. And before we go, we wanted to share some of our favorite places here in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and the surrounding areas. So let's get going. So I just got back from an over 5,800 mile trip solo. I went to South Dakota and then to our property in Tennessee, had to move some stuff around, get things set up for our domicile and home base in Tennessee and take care of some business. And while Scott was away, I decided to do some filming so we could show you some of our backyard here in Southern Oregon. And as I started editing this, I realized there's a lot of content here. So we're gonna make sure to try to put the content markers, table markers in. So if you wanna to skip to a certain area, you can do that. So Crater Lake is what draws most people to Klamath County. There's a lot of videos on it. It's the only national park in Oregon and you can see it pretty much everywhere. So we decided that this video, we were gonna focus on outside of Crater Lake and the rest of Klamath County and the surrounding areas. Our first stop is the Crater Lake Resort, which is a privately owned RV park and cabins, uh, just about 20 something miles outside of Crater Lake. Over here, okay. Fence line. We're under new ownership as of November, and then we have our we have laundry facilities and our bathroom. Yeah, and you're about what half hour to Crater Lake, right? Yeah, it's about 23 miles south entrance, and then you know once you get to the south entrance, it's another it's another few miles up. Right, and you're only about what 40 40 minutes, 45 miles from to Klamath. Klamath. Yeah. But yeah, this is our little piece of heaven. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing it to me. You're very welcome. The Crater Lake Resort has been here for about 40 years. I thought it was new, but it is under new ownership as of November. And so they've actually really revamped it and made it pretty nice. Just a little further north of the Crater Lake Resort is the Fort Klamath Museum, which is about 35 miles north of Klamath Falls on Highway 62. This eight acre park includes a small museum that features information on the Modoc War and is located on the grounds of a 19th century frontier military post. Hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday through Monday and it is open Memorial Day through September and the admission is just by donation. A little further to the south along Agency Lake is the Wood River Wetlands and this is a really popular area for kayaking, canoeing, biking, and hiking. I'm at the Wood River Wetlands, and this is a really popular area for canoeing and kayaking, uh, walking, just taking a, a nature walk or a hike. Um, lots of birds, lots of wildlife, beautiful place to come and just float on your kayak. The Wood River Wetland is north of Klamath Falls, and it is open for day use. It's just a really neat place to go. They do have bathrooms. So you can hike or bike or fish, but no vehicles. Another draw to that area is the Upper Klamath Lake. I'm here on the Upper Klamath Lake and Klamath Lake is actually the largest body of water surface area uh, west of the Rockies. So it is uh, 25, approximately 25 miles long and 8 miles wide. It's a pretty shallow lake. The depth is between 8 feet and as deep as 50 or 60 feet, depending on what you read. 
So that's not very deep. It's a um, pretty warm lake. So there is fish in the lake, lots of trout, crappy, uh, crappy, <laughs> um, and some, what else is there? Bass, and it's not really like a well-known bass lake, but there is some smallmouth and largemouth bass, as well as some other kind of smaller fish that uh, you can catch. And there is the occasional sturgeon. I think the last one that was caught in this area was in 2016, uh, was a white sturgeon. So there are some pretty big ancient fish, um, but they are few and far between. The most, most common are, the, are some different species of trout. One thing to note about the Upper Klamath Lake is on the fishing, fishing in the springtime is great and fishing may be okay in the summer, but the fish aren't very good in the summer because it gets so warm, the water gets so warm, my understanding is the fish aren't as good in the summertime. And there's not a lot of actual like water sport recreation on that lake. You won't see um, water skiers or a lot of inner tubing or swimming, um, although I have been in the Upper Klamath Lake, but it was literally to clear the prop of algae. <laughs> There's actually a lot of algae in the lake, so much so that they harvest it and make, um, new, uh, what do they make out of it? Like vitamins and other stuff like that, like Supplement food coloring that. and supplements, that kind of thing. So it's pretty to look at, lots of birds, and I guess people sail on it, but not much swimming. Another thing you'll notice as you go by the lake, especially in the summertime, is we have these cool little bugs called midges. And you'll be driving along and it'll look like all of a sudden there's smoke in the air. And what those actually are is these little green bugs and they will cover your windshield in a matter of seconds. They don't bite, but they get everywhere. They're just a nuisance. Yeah. But one of the only places I think we're, we're kind of famous for it. Yeah, people know when you've driven through Klamath Falls when they see the front of your car. Yeah. So over off of Highway 97 is the Collier Museum and Collier State Parks. And the Collier Museum is a logging museum that showcases logging equipment and history from about 80 years of the logging industry. It's a pretty neat place to go. There's no admission. It is uh, they just ask for donations again. And for somebody who actually worked in the logging industry, it is really kind of cool for me. I worked in the logging industry when I was just out of high school for a few years. Yeah, it was a fun place to go. We took my uncle. Yep. He liked it for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the Collier Museum sits along the banks of Spring Creek. Behind the museum is a day use area where you can launch your kayak. This is Spring Creek probably some of the clearest water you'll see and very slow moving creek so it's easy to paddle up against the current and then paddle back down but you paddle up this up the creek and it takes you to the headwaters and those are springs bubbling up from the ground the water is very cold especially the closer you get to the headwaters and there's a a little, it's kind of weird, a little bacteria ball is called mare's eggs, and they are pretty unique to this area. I mean, they're found worldwide, but not everywhere, if that makes sense. In the summer, this river will be full, especially on the weekend, with kayakers. But right now, it is five o'clock on a weekday, and the only things that are on the river are some ducks. A couple places that you can stay around that area of Northern Klamath County is the, the Collier State Park Campground. And unfortunately, the campground and the, some surrounding areas were pretty much devastated by a fire in what? 2020. 2020. And so I think about 400 acres were destroyed. It's starting to come back. They've logged the area and I believe they're going to be opening up again this summer. It is open seasonally, um, Memorial Day through Labor Day, I believe. They do have a dump station and access to the Williamson River. It's just not quite as secluded and wooded 
as it used to be. Just down the road from the Collier State Park is the privately owned Water Wheel Campground. Pretty peaceful campground right off the highway. This is pretty nice. Looks like they're all full throughs, all full hookups. Eh, maybe I don't see sewer, but I could be wrong. This is site number two that I parked in. Looks like good electrical and stuff. Yeah, our house. RV dump, propane, office and store. And playground. And there's the water wheel. It's really nice. So Klamath Falls was founded in 1867. It was originally named Linkville, and then later they changed the name to Klamath Falls, even though there's really no big falls, more like just little rapids. Klamath Falls is at about 4,100 feet. It's considered the city of sunshine because we have over 300 days of sunshine a year. Hence my sunglasses. <laughs> the city's population is around 22,000 and there's about 71,000 in the whole county. On the north side of the town of Klamath Falls, there's a newer RV resort called Our Journey RV Resort. I believe it opened in 2023 and they have all kinds of concrete level sites, um, a basketball court, dog park, and even a pool behind their clubhouse. Looks like every site has a picnic table. And some even have what looks to be like a little fire pit. Looks like they've got four shower houses. And then a pretty nice clubhouse dog park. Basketball court. It is right across the street from the Love's truck stop. So about a mile away from the Our Journey RV Park Resort is Oregon Institute of Technology and Sky Lakes Medical Center. So near both of those, there's a lot of good places to go for food and drinks. So this is where you'll find our favorite tap house, the Falls Tap House. Here they have a large selection of beers. Uh, they do have wine, seltzers, ciders, uh, some fancy sodas, and they also have food trucks there that are pretty darn good. Also nearby, there are some other restaurants. There will be an Applebee's. There's a Northwest Favorites pizza place, which is Abby's Pizza. Mm -hmm. There's also some Dutch Brothers coffees and a few others. So you won't go hungry if you're staying at the RV park. In the heart of Klamath Falls is a KOA campground called Journey with shady gravel sites, a pool, a dog park. They also have propane available and a fuel station it's a nice place in the center of town. Not too far from either campground or RV park is downtown Klamath Falls. And here you'll find all kinds of awesome restaurants and bars, little locally owned boutiques and shops. So it's a fun place to go walk around. This is where the garage tap house is. I just wanted to show this awesome place and then meeting a friend for a beer or two. <laughs> so it's all color coded with the with the with the white seltzers, green, ciders. What were the reds? Light beer. Okay. And then the blues are beer. The color of the beer and level of the cakes. Looking forward to some food. Yum. The next stop is Common Block Brewery. 
located in Klamath Falls. This is the second location. The first original was in Medford, and they just opened this location, oh, in the last couple months. So let's check it out. So I made my friend Stephanie come with me. Hi. So we're going to give Common Block a try, even though Stephanie might have tried it a time or two. A few times. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you. as well as some other great restaurants like Leap of Taste, the Mermaid Garden Cafe, Wong's Restaurant, Rooster's Steak and Chop House, which has amazing, just amazing steaks. Yep. And then also breakfast favorites like the Waffle Hut and the ever so popular Green Blade Bakery. Yum. If you're looking for nightlife, there are quite a few places downtown, including Black Dog's Billiards, the Pikey Irish Pub, Basin Martini Bar, and even a speakeasy-like establishment called the Night Owl Bar. Just a little bit to the west of Klamath Falls, you'll find more park. And this is a really popular park that has all kinds of recreation. There's lake access um, on one side of Lakeshore Drive uh, with a picnic area and playground. And then on the other side, they even have pickleball courts, uh, tennis courts, and then also, uh, what's that called? Oh, Frisbee golf. And they have hiking and mountain biking. So lots to do just in Moore Park alone. I'm at the Running Y Resort, and behind me is the Running Y Golf Course, which is the only Arnold Palmer designed golf course in the state of Oregon. And when they interviewed on Arnold Palmer before, um, he was talking about, and he couldn't really pin down his favorite golf course. So he spewed off about 16 golf courses and the Running Y Resort was one of them. And he's designed over 300 courses. So for this to be one of his top 16, and they call it the Sweet 16, uh, is pretty impressive. So if you like golf, uh, you can check this out. They have a lodge here you can stay at, um, a really nice restaurant, and it's just a pretty neat place to come and check out. If you continue west from there, you'll be in the Sky Lakes Wilderness area or Mountain Lakes area. Here you'll find the Pacific Crest Trail, there are more mountain biking areas, more places to hike, along with a lot of lakes. A couple of the more known ones are Fish Lake. It's closed right now for winter. Winter here up in the hill, up in the mountains. And Lake of the Woods. Both of these lakes have some cool camping areas. They both have restaurants, and um, most of them are actually open most of the year round, even though maybe the camping isn't. Yeah, I don't think the camping is, but the resorts are. So you can go up there in the dead of winter and do some snowmobiling and yes. ice fishing sometimes on oh, the yeah. fish lake. And, and Lake of the Woods. And Lake of the Woods, yep. And their food is actually really good. I worked up there for a few seasons and we would go in there and get lunch occasionally. So it worked out really nice. Yeah. And they also have, I believe they have cabins you can rent um, as well as they have a marina. You can bring your own boat or you can rent one of theirs. And this is where you can go water skiing and intertubing and jet skiing. Yes. Good recreational lakes. Yeah. South on Highway 97, uh, there's a road called State Line Road. So I'm driving along State Line Road in Oregon. It's actually on the Oregon-California border, hence the name State Line Road. And just am going through the Klamath Falls uh, Wildlife Refuge. And Klamath County is known for the largest wintering population of bald eagles in the lower 48. Uh, we can't compete with Alaska and don't even try, but chances are when you're driving along this road, you're going to see a bald eagle or five, especially in the winter. The refuge is on the Pacific Flyway, so there's a lot of geese and other birds coming through. 
So this is a very popular place for bird watching. So be careful when you're driving along. You'll see the birders parked all over the roads. And sometimes they're not paying attention because they're watching the birds. Take some pictures. Yeah. The Lower Klamath Wildlife Refuge. Which happened to be the nation's first waterfall refuge uh, named in 1908 by Theodore Roosevelt. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> There aren't too many places to camp here in the southern part, portion of the basin. There are a couple RV parks in the town of Merrill, and I'm not, I don't know too much about them. And then there's another RV park on State Line Road called State Line RV Park that you can check out. Another option that we found was the fairgrounds at the Tule Lake Butte Valley Fairgrounds in Northern California, which is just down the road. So we are in Tule Lake, California at the Tule Lake Butte Valley Fairgrounds. Apologize about the wind. Seems to be a theme around here. So the fairgrounds is right in front of us. But the RV Camping Museum and Office are to the right as is the Tule Lake National Monument Visitor Center. So let's go check out the camping. So the Tule Lake Fairgrounds has full hookups, or I think maybe it's just water and power. So let's take a look. Nope, there's sewer as well. Look at that. Water, power, and sewer. Self-pay, full hookups, $36 per night, partial hookups, 30, dry camping is 20, dump and fill is 10, Passport America rate applies, we got the payment envelopes inside, and then the secure payment here. So we should have plenty of availability except for during the Tule Lake Fair, which will be September 5th through the 8th. Then it packs up and gets really full. Brand new Klamath Basin National Wildlife Refuge Complex Visitor Center. Open in 2024. Some of the birds you'll see here. Absolutely gorgeous day here in the Tule Lake Wildlife Refuge. You can do a driving tour. And as of March 31st, it looks like they're working back behind me on a hiking area with a public bathroom, parking area, um, just more places that you can go do some more outdoor adventures. The refuge is a great place to take your bikes or electric bikes. As you continue south into Northern California, you will come across the Lava Beds National Monument. When you come to the Lava Beds and you enter off of Hill Road, which is where we just came from by the Tule Lake National Wildlife Refuge, uh, you'll have a choice to either go right to the visitor center 
and a bunch of different caves, or you can go left to Captain Jack's Stronghold. I highly recommend checking out Captain Jack's Stronghold. It's a short hike or walk. And what I would really recommend is, is watching the PBS documentary about Captain Jack's Stronghold and the Modoc Indian Wars. You'll get a lot of information in, about the history of the Lava Beds Monument area. Um, and it will just really enrich your experience, I think. So we'll put a link in the description um, to the video. I think you can stream it on PBS or it might be on YouTube, so we'll uh, let you know. And if the flag is up, then they're charging a fee at the gate station. But if the flag is not up, like today on Easter Sunday, uh, you just drive through and go to the visitor center and you can pay your entrance fee there. I'm a National Parks Pass holder, so I get in free anyway. go to where the fence is otherwise you just see a bunch of well we'll just call them local artists or visitor artists otherwise known as graffiti maybe petroglyphs are they just ancient graffiti I don't know be the judge this is where you want to start because you'll see them immediately This is my favorite. Sconchin Butte is named after Native American Sconchin John. It is a one mile trail from the back of the, right about there, of the hill up to the top, which actually is a fire lookout. And you can actually go in there, and if you take your kids with you, they can get little ranger stickers if there's a ranger up there. And it has some gorgeous, gorgeous view. Definitely worth doing the hike. There was a pretty big fire that raged through here a couple years ago, and um, well, it obviously didn't hurt the lava rocks. But it's really nice to see that there's some new growth and some new life coming out, showing up. It's kind of like you're in another world driving through the lava beds. here at the Lava Beds campground. Um, we'll take a quick little circle and I'll show you around and see if it's someplace that you'd want to come. Looks like it's first come first serve, $10 per site per night. And um, it's just all dry camping. So um, not boondocking, dry camping. Because you have to camp in designated spots. So that's my difference. Beautiful day here, a little breezy. So I'll show you some sights. Mm -hmm. 
part of it was spared from the fire, as you can see, and part of it, well, your Starlink will work. How's that? definitely think A6 is the best site in the house, but not for big rigs. Caving is one of the most popular things to do while you're visiting the Lava Beds National Monument. Um, from their website, I'm going to read some of their guidelines. Long pants and long sleeves and closed-toed shoes and boots or boots are a must. Temperatures in the caves average 55 degrees Fahrenheit all year. Three flashlights per group is a bare minimum in case of dead bulbs or batteries. And everyone in your group needs their own flashlight. Flashlights can be borrowed from the visitor center but must be returned each afternoon. Always let someone know where you're going and when you will return caving. We highly recommend a helmet to protect your head and bicycle helmets work just fine. They do sell inexpensive bump houses. They do sell inexpensive bump hats at the visitor center as well. They also recommend sturdy gloves and knee pads if you plan to visit some of the more difficult caves. And you can find out information about all of the different caves in their cave guide that you can get at the visitor center. Scott's Perfect. not Scott's not gonna go crawling on his hands and knees. I'm not crawling through the caves. <laughs> nope. Uh, it's a lot of jagged lava that you're crawling over. Uh, maps inside of the developed caves are also available for sale in the visitor center and are highly recommended for the more difficult, complicated caves. You don't want to get stuck in one of those. They do ask that you get a cave permit. It is required. It is free. They just want to make sure that white nose disease is not being spread because it is not here but it has been found at other caves in the United States. Happy Easter Sunday. not exactly in my cave, caving shoes. You can see from the path, it's pretty rocky. So you wanna wear good shoes. I love this cave. I'm here at Skull Cave in the Lava Beds National Monument, and this happens to be my favorite cave because when you go down this, when you come down the steps, you just see this giant cavernous opening that you probably can't tell from the video just how big it is. There's really only one cave that is by the visitor by the visitor center called Mushpot that is lighted and accessible for you know people who may have difficulty getting around. Most of the other ones are pretty rough and some of them you have to get on your hands and knees and crawl and some of them are nice big cavernous like this one. Uh, this one does go down further. There are no lights in the cave so you want to have a flashlight. Uh, cell phone lights are not recommended just because they're just not strong enough and if you listen you'll hear that it's super quiet 
And as we go in, it'll be super dark. Right now, it's lit up because there's a very large opening. But as we get down further, not so much. So come, come with me. I'm here on an Easter Sunday and the visitor center said that it's been actually quite slow today. Oh. So I'm here at the end of the cave. There's some stairs in front of me that leads down to a blocked off area that has some ice in it. They blocked it off to protect it from people. See? Super steep stairs. Come on down. More stairs. Well, you know, it's kind of creepy going into a cave all by yourself and having nobody else be here also. So the Skull Cave ice floor is blocked off. Can't go any further. Let's not drop my flashlight. Well, I can let you know that it's pretty cold down here. You really shouldn't cave alone. Let's go back. Okay, well, here goes nothing. Just some steep stairs. So if you're out of shape like me, <laughs> um, just know that there are about 75 mostly super steep stairs uh, leading down to the ice cave and about 55 really um, uneven and rugged rock stairs leading into the cave. I think it's worth it. Just take your time. They do have handrails, um, but make sure you bring probably more than one flashlight. Each person should have one and you probably should bring at least one extra just in case the light goes out, because when it's dark in the cave, it's dark. Thanks for going with me. There's lots more to see here, and I'll leave it for you to come and explore. So if you made it this far through the video, we want to thank you for watching and touring along with us on our tour of the Klamath Basin. Let us know in the comments below if you've been to the Klamath Basin, and if you have, what are some of your favorite places that you've been to? Uh, did I miss anything? Um, or have you been to any of the places that I'm, that we mentioned? I'm sure there's a lot of things that we probably did miss. There's a okay. lot of stuff that's here and there's you could more. spend a lot of time here traveling around the area. So we hope you enjoyed, you know, please give us a thumbs up and, uh, consider subscribing to our channel. Um, we're going to continue hopefully doing more videos like this as we proceed forward. We've been quite busy getting ready to go full time. So we've had a few little gaps in our videos, but as we get on the road full time, hopefully we will be a little bit more consistent. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you ring that bell so you can see future videos and get notified right away. Ding, ding, ding.